Thank you everyone and uh, welcome to What's New in Maple 18 for Industry. I'm very excited to show you many of the additions we've added in version 18 uh, to support uh, professional users um, both in, uh, in the engineering community and, and the research community um, and the people using um, Maple for, uh, for other uh, professional purposes. Um, so I'm going to um, begin the discussion by just reviewing uh, the workflow that we have um, recently, this, the, in, in recent presentations, we've summarized for professional for professional users, and how Maple can be uh, an asset to such users. And then we'll look at some of the new features that have been added in Maple 18, um, including some general purpose new features that uh, broaden the Maple experience for all users and then a number of features that uh, you'll find of particular relevance to professional users to, and, and industrial users. So let me begin by um, reviewing some of the uh, uh, some material that some of you may be familiar with if you've seen past presentations by us. And this is our uh, concept to deploy framework. The idea is that you can to make use of Maple as a high level prototyping tool. Um, in the beginning, you, you have an idea, and when you have an idea, you, um, you don't want to be bothered with the, uh, the, the, you know, the detailed implementation for, uh, of, of, uh, of that idea in code or, or in, a, in a physical system, um, because really at that point you want to explore concepts, you want to move around freely within, within problem space. And what you need for that is a general purpose tool which has an intuitive syntax for entering problems and a wide suite of tools for describing the problem that you're trying to summarize um, and then uh, in working with other other uh, perhaps existing data sources you have that uh, that you're trying to understand so so that's um, that's the first part the concept and in that maple's advanced suite of tools is of course highly useful um, the second part is the technical solution development, where at this point it's we're not necessarily in the full-fledged development of a, of a particular solution to our problem. We're moving around in that problem space. We've we've uh, we've put together uh, some kind of implementation of our problem in in code. We've realized we've realized it in some way, but we're working around in this problem space, and we're. We're, we're making use of this broad suite of, of computational tools that Maple offers to, uh, to examine and, and play around with different possible implementations of a, of a solution to our problem. And in this, play, in this case, this is where uh, a lower level tool would, uh, you, you, just, you, you would just spin a lot of cycles trying to move around in that space. You, you would having, be, having to write a lot of boilerplate code to consider different implementations and, and different, different uh, frameworks for, for addressing your problem. So in the, the technical solution development, Maple's high-level tools are, are, of, are of great power. Um, and the, the last step really is the solution and then deployment. Um, and that is where we, we focus in on a particular solution to our problem. And we make use of some of the concept, some of the, the tools within Maple, in the, in the case of Maple, for, for just deploying that, that solution in one of several ways. That could be a Maple worksheet. It could be if, uh, if you, you have, a, have a, a need for, uh, for, for very, very fast code. Um, it could be making use of some of our code generation facilities. Uh, it could be um, producing a report, for example, um, like a printed report or a PDF. Um, it could be the result, the end result could be integration with a, another, another piece of engineering or, or productivity software such as a, a CAD system. Or it could be using another tool within the Maple family such as MapleNet for, for accessing computations online or the Maple Player for making your, your interactive Maple documents available to colleagues who may not have purchased Maple via the free Maple Player available for download. So this is the workflow that we envision for how you how 
people in, in, in uh, industry and engineering, uh, people designing industry, industrial and engineering applications would make use of a tool like Maple and how we, we can leverage our existing set of uh, our existing tool set for, for solving those types of problems. So we'll see as we examine some of the, the features that have been added um, in Maple 18 specifically, um, I, I'd like to, you know, you keep this framework in the back of your mind and imagine how these tools that we're describing could play a role in this, this particular workflow. So uh, let me uh, move on first by um, just showing you a brief glimpse of what is new in Maple 18. So this is a, a broad uh, swathe of, of, of our, just a really a, a broad swathe of, of what is ultimately a small subset of all the changes we've made between versions 17 and 18. And these are, these are some of the areas where we, uh, we've, we've invested a considerable amount of effort for v version 18. Um, and, and a number of these in particular are of relevance to uh, industrial users. But I just wanted to give you, at, at this stage, I just wanted to give you uh, a taste of the breadth of changes that we've incorporated in this version. So that you understand that, that what you are getting in this presentation is really the tip of a very large iceberg. So I'm going to focus on a few features of general interest first that we consider are, are sort of marquee features for, for version 18. And then we'll look at some, some uh, improvements and additions that are of special relevance to professional users. So the first thing that we, that we want to draw your attention to is the experience of starting Maple. Um, so this is, this is a view into the Maple start page. And indeed, if I were to go to launch Maple at this point, you can see that this is indeed very much the, the same view that you get when you launch Maple. So instead of, in the past, your experience upon launching Maple was, um, was one of, of encountering a blank worksheet. And many users reported to us that they found this a bit forbidding about how it was to, how they were, would uh, actually get started with, uh, with Maple and, and how I would access all the computational power underlying Maple. So the, these, each of these icons launches a submenu, which takes you to some curated content that uh, describes a number of, uh, it includes both help pages and sometimes application worksheets and utility worksheets and, and uh, interactive math apps that examine various concepts related to the, the theme that, that is suggested by the icon name. So it's a it's a way that we're very happy about to uh, add some more some more features and so, so add an easier facility for accessing a lot of the underlying content that may have been more difficult to find before. Going back to my my presentation, um, the the other thing I wanted to uh, draw your attention to in Maple 18 is our brand new help system. So this is uh, this we we've essentially completely replaced the whole engine for our help system within Maple. We now have a, a, a powerful database engine underpinning it uh, and, and our search, is, is search tools are much more robust. As well, you'll, you'll see that in Maple there's now, from, if you're coming from version 17, which I suspect you are, uh, then you're probably familiar that with the fact in the, in the past that we had to launch the, the help window specifically to search for content. But here I can search for, I can type whatever I like into this menu and you'll notice that as I enter character by character I, I get a, uh, a list of partial results based on what I've entered so far. So you can see a few results here and if you if you invoke the help system you can you can gain a lot more access to uh, to help content, and as well the, the the search results that you'll see when you search in, for the help system now contain more than just help pages. They contain other other types of Maple content, including content from the Maple Cloud. So if you if you were to make a worksheet uh, demonstrating a solution to some particular engineering problem, for example, and make it available on the Maple Cloud, uh, then 
other users could potentially have access to it. Um, and it would come up in, in their search results, uh, depending on, on uh, what keywords you chose. So let me, um, so those are a couple of the new features. And let me um, go on. Uh, so, so of relevance to, for some, um, some of you, we also have help search now available for languages other than English for, for localized versions of Maple, such as Japanese. And we have uh, the results, as I mentioned, the, um, the results contain more than just help pages, but, but additional material as well. The other thing I, so getting onto the professional features, the, the particular uh, new packages which, which encode uh, new types of, of computations possible in, in Maple 18, the, a package I want to draw your attention to is our, our new package for time series analysis. So this is a package for examining time-dependent data. Um, essentially what you can work with is any time-dependent data in, for which there are uniform intervals between time points. Um, this allows uh, visualization. Um, you, can, uh, you can examine time data and find discover patterns within the data. And you can essentially fit curves to that data and do forecasting. So this is, this is um, of course, you can imagine that the, the interest here is, is driven to some degree by finance, but it also has many applications for statistics, signal processing, and uh, econometrics. So we'll see a um, we'll see an example of uh, of time series analysis shortly, um, and let me just introduce another uh, new feature for you. Um, this feature is the improvements to the explore command. The explore command is a powerful tool for generating interac interactive applications within Maple. We have a very powerful framework for generating interactive applications consisting of sliders and buttons with which you can manipulate and interact with, with visualized data or, or, uh, or mathematical expressions. And this, is, this can be a, a great power in um, if you're trying to understand the behavior of a system or work with a, uh, a particular model and, and vary the parameters in that model and, and uh, d discover the, uh, the behavior of the model as you, as you alter the parameters. Um, and so while we have this, this uh, great framework for building these interactive applications, this explore command really automates the generation of, that, of, of one of those, those uh, interactive applications with a single command. We'll see some examples of that later. And the last thing I want to mention as a new feature is visualizations themselves. Um, though it isn't of immediate impact for professional users, we have a whole new package for uh, ge beautiful generation of fractals. But the thing that is of relevance to professional users is the fact that the mechanism underlying the generation of those fractals essentially depends on our ability to, to generate on the fly compiled versions of Maple code that is incredibly fast. Meaning these things can be computed on the fly and, and therefore other types of computations can be dispatched to our code generation facilities um, and turned into, into compiled versions of the same code which you can then make use of in, your, uh, in, in that uh, problem discovery stage of, your, of uh, working with your, with your sample problems that, like we discussed earlier. As well, we have another, a number of other improvements for, uh, in the area of visualizations, which is of importance for, uh, for when you want to export data um, or, or generate powerful visualizations of, uh, of imported data. Um, so, for example, you can now uh, meld your Maple plots with uh, JPEG images by um, painting the background of your of your image with a, with a with an sorry painting the background of your plot with an image and this is this can lead to powerful uh, powerful way new ways of generating live data visualizations including um, for example in mapping in this application which we'll see uh, in depth shortly so um, let's uh, let's just talk 
quickly uh, at a high level about some of the new, f the, the overall new features, some of which I've already mentioned, that are of relevance to, to, uh, to industrial users. And, and we'll, we'll take a, a walk through Maple sure, immediately after this and look in depth at some of these, including the ones I've mentioned already. So I've already spoken of the time series package. That's a brand new package to, as of Maple 18. We also have a, quite a number of improvements to the signal processing package that was introduced in Maple 17, including new visualization routines and new commands for working with windowing functions. We have a number of improvements to our offerings for dynamic systems and control analysis, including new design tools for uh, linear time invariant dynamic systems and a number of, of other types of systems and new computations made possible. Um, we have two new languages supported in our code generation offerings, so you can now generate from Maple uh, code in the Perl and Python languages. We'll see Python in, uh, we'll see an example of Python in a bit, um, but I will say now that those of you who have made use of Python in the past for scientific and engineering applications will likely be familiar with a couple of the Python uh, libraries for numeric computation, uh, the NumP and SciP libraries. And I just want to mention that uh, among the things that the Maple code generator to Python can do is translate a number of Maple routines, um, a, a subset, to the corresponding routines in those libraries, in those Python libraries. Meaning that uh, in addition to translating the core language, we can translate a number of specialized routines for, for technical computation. And finally, uh, we have a number of improvements in the area of connectivity, um, including we have uh, new tools for communicating with and retrieving data from rem remote websites. So, so in the past, we've, 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 built, we've given you tools that allow you to connect to retrieve data using HTTP, and now we expand that offering to use secure HTTP, that is HTTPS and uh, FTP. As well, we have uh, a number of new supported formats for, um, for exporting 3D plots, including the STL format, which is a widely used input format for 3D printing in the event that you would be interested in building a 3D representation of some data in Maple for the purpose of 3D printing it. Um, and we also have a number of, of um, integration with uh, in, in the new integrations in the area of databases, including integration with SQL Lite. So um, with that said, um, let's, let me go in product and show you a little bit of the stuff that you've uh, that I've spoken of already and, and examine some of these areas in greater depth. So as I, as I mentioned, uh, here's Maple. So uh, I, I already showed you the start page and a couple of examples with the help system. So let me launch now our What's New page. And this shows you a graphic representation of all of the content that's new in 18. So I'll work from this uh, uh, now to, to show you a few examples um, for uh, for some of the the additions we've made. The first one I want to show you um, is let's start with the explore command which I mentioned before. So the explore so I'm going to open that as a worksheet. So the explore command is really it's a tool for creating interactive applications within the current document or worksheet. Um, and this, uh, this allows you, so with 18, there's, there's a much greater uh, degree of control over what types of controls are generated. For those of you who haven't used Explore Command, I think maybe uh, um, an example is, is uh, worth, worthwhile. So what I have here is, is simply a plot, uh, a plot command in Maple. And if I wrap this, this in this explore command, um, I don't have to provide all these, these, these parameters, but these do control the, the type of, of thing that's generated. But if I execute this command, then what I've, what I've produced here from scratch is a visualization with a set of controls. And as I move these controls, 
and alter these parameters. You can see that the that the representation of the uh, of this trig trig function um, is uh, is being updated dynamically. Um, so we, we can control the, the wavelength, the uh, the um, amplitude, and as well the uh, the translation from the from the um, the horizontal axis. So so that's a, that's a you can see that that's a powerful powerful tool, um, but uh, really it's um, you can it's only when you start to see it in more more advanced ways that you can see just just what is possible with it. So we can, we can, there's all kinds of different types of controls we, we now have, whereas in the past, really, we, we, the only automated controls we, we were generating were, were more or less buttons and radio buttons. And this, um, this is really a, a very simple syntax for generating a lot of these interactive applications. And though, though these are all trig functions here, you can understand that there's no, there's nothing about the, this particular thing that requires that. This could, you could just as easily be plotting, for example, uh, a fitting curve through some set of sample data points and adjusting the parameters used for, uh, for what, what uh, type of function you want to fit to or something like that. Um, so I'll just show you this last application. Um, so you can also explore images. So here we have, here we're just generating, what we're generating here is, a, is a, simply, with this one line of code, we're, we're generating uh, a 100 by a 100 matrix full of sample data. And though this sample data comes, is generated here, you could just, just as easily imagine that it, it came from some other source that we were reading. And as we alter this, you can see that the, da the, the same data is being dynamically modified. And this, this uh, transform is being, uh, which is controlled by this, this, this variable parameter p, is, is being, being adapted. So, so you can see what we have here really is an image which is being adjusted on the fly um, by a programmatic uh, control which we've we've auto generated with a single line of command. So really, this uh, this explore command provides gives you a a one click uh, tool for generating a, an interactive application with which you can um, manipulate some some uh, mathematical object or or type of problem that you're they're interested in for for some as perhaps part of that uh, discovery process that we discussed earlier. Here's another example where we are reading in some data from a JPEG and we want to we want to set some image thresholds. So so as we change the threshold of this this image, you can see that we're we're resampling the image and redrawing it live. So so that's um that's enough about explore I think, but you can see that the last example I want to show you is uh, is a is part of our our a new package for escape time fractals, and as I mentioned, the, though this isn't of immediate relevance to professional users as an as uh, an end goal, it does draw on the all the infrastructure we've generated to generate these fractal representations in incredibly with incredible speed. So as I as I update this, you can see that I'm I'm jumping into the fractal piece by piece and all this fractal imagery is being generated live as as we explore this so you can you can understand that whether we're dealing with representing fractals or dealing with some other type of computation or smoothing or or interpolation on some data data values. Um, there's a, a very powerful computational infrastructure for moving quickly from uh, a representation of data as a series of hardware floats or integers in memory to a a live uh, manipulatable image representation. So let me go back to the what's to the index page for what's new. 
So if we jump back to the start page and then launch the What's New page again, let me let's look at um, something of, of more immediate. Um, so something I've, uh, something else I've, I've mentioned, um, which is the time series analysis package. So we'll open that up, and so this is as I mentioned, this is a uh, this this provides a lot of powerful tools for for doing forecasting with time data. So if we load the package, and let's look at this this first example shown here. Um, so what we have is what we've what we've got hold of is some sample data representing the number of airline passengers arriving at a particular airport um, in between two historical dates in the past from 1949 to 1960. So the, the goal here is can we extrapolate from this set of uh, from this uh, these trends and infer the future and forecast the future uh, future number of arrivals in in uh, future years well, future years from the perspective of 1960 but of course you could you can just do, just as well do this now the benefit of of course being after 1960 is that we can check whether or not we were right um, so so let's uh, let's load this so we're reading this in from as you can see here we're reading this in from a CSV file so it's uh, so it's this is also a demonstration of Maple's connectivity with a number of data formats, C CSV being one. But of course, we can also read Excel files and many other types of tools, all of which was which was there in Maple 17 as well. So if we if we read this in, and we import this as a matrix, you can see that you can examine this data, and this this shows you the uh, the number of monthly passengers and the date, and so you can. You can see uh, how many of the passengers there, there were for each month. Well, so if we examine the first five rows, in, in January 1949, for example, there was 112 passengers. In February, 118, etc. And it, you know, historically, of course, it's not surprising that as air traffic uh, rose in the in the late 50s and early 60s, that you would get more and more passengers arriving. Um, so let's let's try and infer, use a time series package to make some inferences here, forecasting. So if we per construct a time series with uh, based on this data, we can extract the data, we can look at the dates, um, and if we were to browse that again, we have the we have this all the set of dates here, and let's plot it. So here is, predictably enough, our, our, our uh, rep visual representation of the arrival of these passengers with the dates. And you can see that it's recognized the years and recognized that, that the uh, individual uh, references are two months. So it's, and it, it separate that into years. And you, we can do a seasonal subseries point. So, so this is a, a particular type of illustration for periodic data such as time series which shows you the number of passengers arriving in a given month broken up by month so this is starting from 1949 through to 1960 this shows you all the points of, of people arriving in january so that can be powerful if you're trying to examine uh, behavior in periodic periodic data which which is of course airline arrivals is something that is periodic on an annual basis because there are particular times of the year where there's more, less or more traffic. Um, and so what we can do with this, with the powerful tools within Maple, we can pick a suitable model from a family of 30, 30 re related models and tweak it to suit this particular time series. Um, so the, the uh, so we'll take an exponential smoothing model of this, of this particular, uh, time series and it is computing a, uh, an extrapolation at this point and after that is completed we will query that and uh, and look at some of the uh, results so as I said uh, this is um, there's quite a lot of um, underlying infrastructure going on here uh, which is 
drawing on tools for uh, for fitting for for fitting curves to data, and um, we we as you know we have a number of, of an existing tools for for curve fitting, um, which include uh, tools for uh, for both. Uh, Fitting cubic splines and uh, and linear splines and, and other types of data to uh, to models such as that, and there is uh, quite a lot of um, complexity to to this uh, this type of data, um, and so here we have uh, our results back in the model, and if we query the parameters, you can see that. Um, these are the the uh, model parameters that it has inferred beta equals this value and, and gamma this value for the the task at hand and if we choose to forecast this model then and and plot with the forecast you can see that this is the forecast the blue represents the forecast behavior for the years from 1959 through 1961 and the red, of course, is the real uh, examined behavior, or the real, uh, the the real uh, recorded behavior. So we can understand, we can make various um, uh, conclude, draw various conclusions about how far off we were, and and adjust the model, uh, you know, as we see fit to to uh, accommodate that data and and uh, be usable for future data. Um, I won't get into further details about this particular application, but. It's, uh, it uses uh, robust tools and, uh, st and essentially um, industry standard tools for making these types of inferences. So, and it's uh, broadly applicable to all kinds of periodic data that depends in the, uh, in the dependent variable on time. So um, let, me, uh, let me go on to discuss some updates to our signal processing offerings. So if I go back to the What's New page and launch the signal processing pack, signal processing What's New, what's new page, all of which, by the way, you can see, if all of, it, this, all of, the, all of the examples you can see here are directly in um, Maple, uh, Maple 18. I'm not showing you anything that isn't, you can't also get in product. So, so as you know, the signal processing package has uh, w are, was introduced in Maple 17, and it has undergone a few changes and additions between then and now. Um, but uh, so one of the among the new additions we've added to Maple 18, the signal processing package for Maple 18, includes uh, functions to plot the spectrogram of a signal, as well as uh, power spectrum and signal plot, and we can you have a much greater degree of control over the visualization of your spectrograms. So let's, uh, let's have a look at this example here. So if we open a, so we have a wave file that, that has been recorded at 11 kilohertz of a male voice saying the word maple sim. Um, and if we read that in and generate a spectrogram from it, you can see here this is immediately the same illustration you see on the right. Um, and the, these uh, these parameters here simply describe the color scheme that we wanted to specify for this uh, this thing. We could we could change that to uh, some other color if we wanted to, and we would get a, a slightly different look. There's a reason we chose this particular one because it it shows the data well, but it's uh, fully customizable. Um, to 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 have a more interesting example. Here's one uh, of a of a uh, a violin note played with vibrato, and the question is, can we? So vibrato is well, essentially, can, the, the question is, can we detect the vibrato um, the, using a visualization of this of the violin note um, using the the uh, signal processing package? So if you read it in as a WAV file and generate an audio tools representation of that, that note then and generate a spectrogram from that, then 
you can see that there's this periodic fluctuation here in time which illustrates the vibrato um, as, the, uh, as the note is sort of wavers back and forth on, on a particular point. Um, so there's, uh, there's a number of new, I, I won't get into this part, part um, in detail, but there are a number of additional windowing functions added for the signal processing package um, for those of you uh, with a particular interest in, in signal processing. So there are uh, a number of applications which make use, which built into Maple, um, which make use of these uh, these new tools, which and which you can use to study and, and understand the, the behavior of the new tools better. Um, let me move on to some other topics. And if I go back to what's new, some of the other things I wanted to show you is some offerings we have in the area of um, connectivity. So one of the the new tools we have is a package for uh, so we, we already had a, a support for connecting to uh, URL data sources as HTTP so this is th this is more of that but we've now extended that support to a lot of the existing maple commands so many commands that, that used to take uh, a file now also take a URL so um, for example with this command we can we can read in uh, a JPEG directly downloaded from the internet live and we immediately get it back as a maple array and we can now embed this image programmatically in our worksheet and see that it is a, uh, a image of a fingerprint but you could also do analysis on this array do things with it so it just even though it's there's nothing about this that it wasn't possible for you could always have downloaded it to a file and then write it in um, it just saves you that one extra step and makes it uh, much more much easier um, some some definite definite new content um, as I mentioned we have a number of new tools and functionality for generating import and importing and exporting 3d graphic models um, so we we support seven new formats for uh, th for encoding 3D graphic data, and we support all of these for both import and export. Um, so here is uh, here's one where we um, are importing um, a gear, and this is uh, a gear rendered as an STL file, um, which which you can see. And uh, though, so that you can use you can use this to to quickly generate um, interesting visual representations of three-dimensional data with for use in your Maple application. But really, I suspect the more interesting application, for those of you interested in 3D modeling, is going to be the exporting. So let's let's have a quick look at this one. So if I um, if I here here's a quick uh, representation of, a, of an interesting application in Maple. It's a it's a very entangled knot um, encoded with this mathematical formula um, described by this polynomial. And what I can do is um, I'm I'm going to change this example slightly so that I'm just going to uh, export directly to my own um, personal uh, desktop directory. And if I export that, oh, excuse me. Um, oh, I forgot to type users. That's what you get for modifying your example live. Uh, there we go. Um, so what we have now is a representation of this not as a, as a stereolithographic file. Um, and we can import it back into Maple and see that indeed it does look exactly what we would expect to, how it to look. Um, but as well, I, I just happen to have on my uh, on my program another t another uh, third-party application for visualizing uh, an STL file for the purpose of 3D printing. So let's just demonstrate that indeed we have um, succeeded in adding um, 
and, and exporting that to a format that you can use if you were interested in, in some other application. So let's um, so here we so here we see, in, as as we as we uh, expect that we do indeed have a representation of this not as an STL file. Um, you can so there's there's really there's we support most types of Maple Mapleplot formats uh, for export in this way. So there's a, a lot of um, a power you can have with this. You could you could uh, generate a lot of 3D models and uh, within Maple, and you can describe them mathematically, and then then make use of that geometry for some other purpose. As well, 3D uh, STL is a common import format for many CAD systems, so it's possible to to combine your geometry with uh, some CAD program as well. So. Um, and uh, maybe if we have time, we'll, we might see another fun example with regards to uh, 3D plot format. We also have a number of additional offerings for import and export of tabular and spreadsheet data. We, as you know, we already uh, supported import of Excel data. And we now additionally support a number of other spreadsheet formats, including the ones that you, those of you who have used the um, OpenOffice suite of tools will be familiar with. So we can, we can import data and visualize it directly in Maple. And then you can do computations on this data, much as we saw earlier with the CSV example for time series. Um, as well, we have uh, new support for reading and writing to, from compressed files, including both the gzip files and, uh, and zip files. And a number of uh, so, some new um, improvements to our export capabilities for LaTeX for those of you interested in authoring scientific publications that make use of LaTeX. Um, we, we now have uh, some improvements in the, some of the export of for the display of some mathematical functions as well as, uh, as in this particular case um, a, uh, the visual display of a graph. Um, so let me, uh, let me move on to, to discuss some, uh, some other uh, some other Things that might be of interest. Um, so if I, I jump back to our what's new page, then you can see that uh, another thing that uh, where we we have um, added something that that is likely of, of interest to professional users is in the area of of, um, of displaying three dimensional data with with images. So we have, as I mentioned, um, in May have mentioned already um, this uh, this capability of now all customizing the shading of, of a visualization of a plot. So you can now describe um, essentially set a spec a uh, two points in a color space and and the uh, according with this color scheme command and then it will uh, Maple will will use uh, essentially combinations of those two colors in in painting the surface. And you can also paint with an image. So let's let's see an example of that. Um, if we move down to here, here we have a roller coaster and what I've done is I've drawn the roller coaster on top of a, the surface, a 3D surface. And you, another example of the same could be um, a visualization, uh, you know, for example, you, you could plot a cartographic data on an actual sphere, so it really looks like a map of, of, a, of a planet. So this, this allows us to combine visual representations of data as, as uh, flat image files and then give them three, a three-dimensional view which, uh, for, for a really effective visual representation of that data. So, um, with uh, let me um, let me go back to uh, to our what's new page here and look at um, some additional changes. So so those of you who are interested in performance uh, may be interested in some of the uh, some of the additions here that we've made in uh, Maple eighteen. Um, we have uh, in in the particular case of polynomial arithmetic, um, we have uh, a significantly faster performance compared to our uh, 
our offerings in 17 for a number of cases and also making use of um, parallelism and uh, we as well we have uh, especially made a special effort of optimizing a number of numerical linear algebra computations such as the singular, singular values decomposition which is based on the CLLA PAC library um, so you can see that Maple 18 is uh, considerably faster than its predecessors in this regard. So um, overall, we have uh, a wide variety of, of offerings in, in 18, which, which really make it a powerful tool for, uh, for, for that kind of problem discovery, which I talked about at the beginning of this, this presentation. And both with the, uh, uh, the, the last thing I want to show you actually um, is the, uh, the, the, the stuff that connects to the deployment phase, which is our cogeneration offerings. So if we open up what's new here and go, go to uh, um, cogeneration, you'll see that we have a number of of powerful tools now for extending our suite of, of uh, supported languages to to Python, and as I mentioned, we're not just supporting Python, but also the uh, large parts of uh, the Python numeric libraries. So in this particular case, you see that um, I'm actually generating code that uh, draws on some number theoretic computations in Python in the SIMP library, but uh, as well, um, I'm, I could also, so here's, here's uh, some code that, uh, that, will gener that will generate linear, translate linear algebra routines in Maple into the corresponding routines in, from the NumPy library in Python. Uh, it will translate Bessel functions in Maple into Bessel functions in Python um, and various other, other tools. So you can see that not only have we offered a, a wide variety of of tools for uh, quickly prototyping and, exam and, and exploring uh, problems um, and uh, building an infrastructure for, for exploring that problem set. Um, we've enhanced our tools for, for the deployment phase where you, you take the, uh, the prototype that you've developed and, and uh, prepare it for, for uh, sharing with, with uh, colleagues or, or, uh, or your user, user base.